the CUA program teaches the fundamentals of usability engineering. But today, usability is no longer enough. There's a set of skills, there's a set of concerns that you've got to deal with that go beyond the basics of usability. It's not enough that I make something user-friendly or easy to use. I've got to deal with the big picture of UX strategy. How do I deal with cross-channel integration? I've got to deal with industrial strength innovation. I've got to be able to apply persuasion engineering methods. And I've got to be able to work on an industrial scale. So basic usability is no longer enough. And it's embarrassing to go out to the market and do things that are based on work from 1998. We need to have that foundation, but we need to go beyond it. And the CXA program is specifically engineered to do that. So the CXA program has a foundation in persuasion engineering. It's not enough that we engineer things that people can use. We need to engineer things that people will want to use. So we have to deal with people's emotions. We have to trigger conversion. And we have to deal with a whole set of principles that go beyond just basic usability engineering. On that foundation, we can address the big questions. And the big course is about those big questions. In your organization, how do you deal with the cross-channel UX strategy? How do I engineer a customer experience that's coherent as I move from mobile devices to call centers to online tablets? How does all that come together to create an integrated experience? And how do I, within that, inject innovation work so that I can really differentiate my organization and have breakthroughs moving forward. So I've got to have the right strategy. I've got to have innovation within that and then driving that to classical structural design. And I need to have all that on a foundation of not just usability, but persuasion engineering, or what we call PET, persuasion, emotion, and trust. And then when we do that today, it's not enough to just say, OK, I'm going to do great work. I have to do that as part of a mature operation. So you as an individual need to be able to work effectively in a mature user experience practice, which is institutionalized. And so we have a short program on that as well. So those are the things that all come together to go from a 1998 usability engineer to a user experience expert. The innovation and strategy course, that's the big course, that provides you a framework, a strategic framework of crafting user experience for your target users. And that strategic framework also includes the cross-channel strategy, which is you know, the, the way that user experience will be delivered in a con consistent and coherent manner across different channels. Further. The big course also teaches you how you deliver innovation within that strategic framework. You know, I'll give you an example. So we were working for a client for whom we did extensive research, pet research, and we found that security was a very big issue in terms of using the services of this client. Since security was a very big issue, the strategy of the user experience that was needed across all channels had to therefore rest on this foundation of how you enhance security, how you enhance the feeling of trust. Once we created that user experience strategy, then we were able to conduct innovation program where we delved into this question of security and actually came up with 26 different ideas of how security would be enhanced through the different channels. And then we sat and put them through three filters. How would business rate these 26 ideas? How would technology be able to implement these 26 ideas? And how would users prioritize these 26 ideas? And from that three, you know, three vector filtration process emerged 12 final ideas, which were then 
that we went forward for design and implementation. So this entire loop of beginning with strategy and then creating innovative products, or it could be business models, and then further going on for implementation, all of this is something you learn from the big course. The institutionalization course goes a step further, and it allows you to create a roadmap for your organization to build a large, complex, industrial scale, mature user experience process so that you can have a sustainable, repeatable, scalable method that you use to create, constantly create user experience, no matter what the specific product or the service may be. That's what institutionalization teaches you, how you build that capability within your organization. If you're new to the field, well, you know, it's like if you want to go for a calculus class before you've done basic math. So, no. You should first get the fundamentals, which is the CUA courses, the fundamentals of usability. Once you have that, once you are up to speed with the fundamentals and you've got some experience of applying the knowledge that you get uh, by taking the CUA courses in real life, in your work life, then it's a good idea to take the CXA. But if you're not a manager, that really doesn't matter because the CXA courses, they are courses for practitioners, for professionals. They are not management courses. It's perfectly fine to take the CXA courses if you're not a manager. That's fine. But it's not fine if you're new to the field. Then you should first get the CUA courses. Marketing professionals, what I would suggest is yes. Part of the CXA program would be very, very beneficial, which is the two courses that are around persuasion engineering, pet design and pet architecture. These two courses, because they are around persuasion, emotion, and trust, areas that are so very important for marketing, for that function, for marketing professionals, those two courses are very useful. The design managers, it is useful because even though you may not yourself be a UX professional, you may or may not, even if you're not, but if you're managing a UX team, this gives you an idea, a very clear idea of what it is that your team, what knowledge your team has and what it can bring to the table. If you have that idea, you will be able to manage the team much better and help raise their strengths. So for that purpose, if you are the manager uh, of a design team for UX team, it is indeed useful to take the CXA courses. So if all we do is basic usability, we get a lot of value. So it's easier to use our stuff. And today, customers expect that. Customers aren't going to put up with a system which is hard to use, awkward. And so you've got to have those fundamental skills, which we have in the CUA program. But putting in the CXA skills takes things to another level. And we have to do that. We have to do that or we'll build a usable wrong thing. We will build applications that don't fit in to an overall user experience strategy. We'll build something which is conventional and really doesn't innovate because we don't do innovation practices. We'll build something that's not compelling because it's good that it's easy to use, but we have to make something that people are going to be excited about, that's going to trigger conversion that's going to work for people emotionally. And so we have to work at that level. So usability is no longer enough. And we have to go beyond that. And we have to work in an institutionalized operation. And so as an individual, you go to another level. And I really expect our whole field to be there anytime soon. As an organization, the UX area is a major differentiator. It's an area of competition. And so to compete, we need to go beyond the fundamental user friendliness to being compelling. When um, I was building the Asian operations, the Indian operations for Human Factors International, 12 years ago, 
it dawned on me that it was very necessary to have a framework, a robust process framework for my business operations to run in a sustainable and reliable and repeatable manner from day to day. For that, I chose to get our India operations ISO certified. And of course, now very recently, our US operations is also ISO certified. What that certification provided was as the head of the operations, it provided me the confidence that my operations was running based on this framework of a very robust process. But at the same time, sometimes our clients would really like the idea that we were ISO certified. It provided a validation of sorts to clients that, you know, this operation, it, if it is ISO certified, that is a mark of trust, of credibility, that you know, you know what you're talking about. If your operations follow a, a framework like that, well, what the services you provide as a result of those operations must also be very reliable. So similarly, the CXA certification does exactly the same you know, two things, which is that at one level, say employers who are hiring UX professionals, at this point in time, it's very difficult for an employer to really discern between someone who has the knowledge, really understands user experience, and somebody who doesn't. And so the certification provides a kind of benchmark. It's a validation to a potential employer that you really do have an understanding of the advanced content that we provide through the CXA. So it acts as a validation. Also, it acts as a validation to yourself because you are now very much more comfortable with the advanced knowledge that you've got via the CXA, the, the knowledge about persuasion engineering, the knowledge about creating a strategic framework for user experience for an organization, the, uh, the knowledge of how to build capability and a, you know, a, a robust, mature, UX process within your organization, that is institutionalization of UX. So you yourself, having got the CXA certification, whether you've taken our courses or not, you have the confidence. It it's, gives you that um, ability to participate in conversations at the C-level in your organization, where the conversations center around business strategy, around uh, innovation, etc. You can contribute and you can also participate in the creation of strategy, in running of innovation programs. So the HFI courses are maintained by an operation with quite a few players, and there's quarterly updates of pretty much everything. And so we keep bringing in the new material. We have an operation that scans the literature, scans our practice, to find the best new ideas, and we put them into the course so that we can share them with everybody. And so we intend and we do keep those courses fresh and keep those courses having the best stuff. Sometimes the best stuff dates back to 1908, and you, you need to know about the Yerkes Dodson Law. Sometimes it's the latest thing that's happening with transhumanism, and we try to bring all of that together for you.